Hello, class, and welcome to another episode of Reading Online with Mr. Shu. Storybook Online, I should say, because I'm copying the one we watch in class. And, sorry, I'm trying a new mic, hoping this mic works better. Maybe it's louder, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But I'm um, trying it. Hopefully my beard doesn't touch it and mess it up. Maybe I should move it. I don't know if it works any good or not. I don't know if it's working. But, um, yeah, let's we'll pinch it over here. Anyway, so hopefully that works. Um, so i am uh, got a new book for you guys. And I specifically was looking through books at a thrift store. And I found a couple I think will be good additions to Mr. Shoe's Storybook Online. This book is entitled, We Don't Eat Our Classmates, and it's by Ryan T. Higgins. And as you can see, looks like, what do you think that is? Is that a dinosaur, a dragon, a lizard? But I thought that would be a good lesson to, for you guys to learn. So, it's Penelope's first day of school, and she can't wait to meet her classmates. But making friends is hard when they're so delicious. Readers will gobble up this hilarious new story from award-winning author and illustrator Ryan T. Higgins. So, here's some of the pages. So we got some, like, different dinosaurs up there. Sketches. All right. We don't eat our classmates. And as our little character says, Hey kids, you will never be eaten by a T-Rex. They are extinct. I promise. So don't worry about getting eaten by dinosaurs, everybody. And um, let's start out our story. Penelope Rex was nervous. It's not every day a little T-Rex starts school. There's Penelope Rex. What are my classmates going to be like? Will they be nice? How many teeth will they have? This was very important. And there we have Penelope. She's in her room. Over here, that's Penelope's mom or dad. And uh, it's her. She's a little nervous. She's got a room. She's got all her toys. She's got her little... Her easel with her... Uh, paper on there. She's got a lot of books in her room. Penelope's mom bought her a new backpack with ponies on it. Ponies were Penelope's favorite because ponies are delicious. Penelope's dad packed her a lunch of 300 tuna sandwiches and one apple juice. <laughs> so here we have Penelope with her backpack. Cool backpack. Ponies on it. And here's the tuna sandwiches. 300 tuna sandwiches and one apple juice. Um, I don't think 300 tuna, well, sandwiches would uh, would last, would uh, fit in a lunchbox. The average size lunchbox. Got this wire. I almost like took out the book. <laughs> took out the camera. Gotta watch out for that. Um, finally, back to the story. Finally, the big day came. And Penelope Rex was very surprised to find out that all of her classmates were. Here's the big day. She's walking to school. And she's about to walk inside the door. It's Penelope. She's going to go inside the door. And she's surprised to find out that her classmates were children. Look. She's a big, she's a little T-Rex, and all the classmates are children. Look at them all. They're all sitting there. All sorts of children. Hey, there's a teacher. Or maybe just a supervisor. I don't know. But look, Penelope's a lot bigger than the kids. So she ate them. <gasps> because children are delicious. Whoa. Penelope Rex 
said Mrs. Noodleman. We don't eat our classmates. Please spit them out at once. So she did. So here we have Penelope ate all the children. And none of them are there anymore. They're all gone. She's got a mouthful of children. And there's the teacher telling her, you need to spit out all those kids. And let's see what goes on. What happens with Penelope? Ew. So there's the teacher. There's Penelope. She spit out the kid. Look at all the drooling grossness. Here they all are. It was not the best way to start school. Still, Penelope was determined to have a good first day. She tried hard to make friends at recess. She finger painted some of her best work. She even saved Griffin Emery a seat at lunch. You can sit here, Penelope said. There she is, trying to play with him at recess, but it looks like they're going to slide down the slide and get eaten by her. And she made a painting of a T-Rex eating a, a child. And there she is, eating her 300 sandwiches. Ah! It's a lot of sandwiches, guys. Penelope started to notice everyone was making friends but her. They're all hiding behind the wall, and here they're all sitting at the circle, but no one's by Penelope. It was lonely. Poor Penelope. When she got home, her dad asked her about her first day of school. I didn't make any pe friends, Penelope cried. None of the children wanted to play with me. Look, Looks like her dad made her a meal. Penelope Rex, her father, asked, Did you eat your classmates? Well, maybe just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to make friends, said her dad, especially if you eat them. You see, Penelope, children are the same as us on the inside. Just taste here. That gave Penelope a lot to think about. So there's Penelope and her dad. And here's her sleeping at night, thinking about what her father said to her. The next day, Penelope tried really hard. Mrs. Noodleman, Penelope ate William Amato again. But poor Penelope, she could not help herself from eating her classmates. There she is, and there goes William Ottoman is gone. Whoa, got eaten by her. And they were all afraid of her. I don't blame them. All the kids at lunch are like, she look at that one girl's running around screaming. Yuck. At least uh, Penelope's spitting out the kids she eats, which is why they got all slime on her. Except Walter. She wasn't eating Walter. Walter was a goldfish. That is one ugly goldfish. So Penelope tried to make friends with him. Will you be my friend, Walter? There she is, trying to make friends with Walter. Because she's lonely. Because we got to be nice to our friends or they're not going to be friends with us. Right, everybody? And she sticks her finger in there. Chomp! Looks like Walter wasn't having it. Eee! Cried Penelope. He's eating my finger! Wah! Oh no! Penelope is in a lot of pain. She's so loud. She's crying. Once Penelope found out what it was like to be someone's snack, she lost her appetite for children. Here she is. She's got her wounded finger, and all the children are still alive and in school. No one's gotten eaten yet. She stopped eating her classmates, even when Cece Woodman spilled barbecue sauce all over herself. And soon, Penelope made friends there they are playing there's the barbecue sauce she spilled all over herself 
And there they are in front. Found you. They're playing hide and go seek. Want a brownie? I helped make them. Looks like Penelope's making friends. Now, even when children look especially delicious, she peeks at Walter and remembers what it's like when someone tries to eat you. There's Walter. And there's Penelope. And Walter the goldfish stares right back at her and licks his lips. And Penelope screams in terror. There's Walter and there's Penelope. Screaming in terror. She does not want to get eaten. Because dinosaurs are delicious. Ha 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 ha. And that is the end of the story. The end. So, what's the moral of that story, guys? Obviously, T-Rexes aren't around anymore. Obviously, you shouldn't eat your friends. You shouldn't eat any human being. You should only eat food that mother or father or grandmother, grandpa, or aunt, uncle, or any adult gives you as long as there's someone you trust and you know. So we don't eat each other, but the moral of that story is take away eating and let's replace it with being nice. You should be nice to your friends. If you want people to play with you, you should be respectful. You should sometimes want to play their games, even though you don't want to play it, just so you can play games with them and be together. And you should not say mean things to your friends. You shouldn't lie to your friends. You shouldn't steal from your friends. You should be nice on the playground to them. And if your friend's hurt or needs help, you should help your friend out. You should stick up for your friends when maybe someone else is bullying them. And show them that you're there and you care about them. And you're going to support them and back them up. So, that is the moral of the story. Don't eat classmates. Really means be nice to your friends. Don't do mean things to your friends. So, that was the story by Ryan T. Higgins. And I'm hoping to find some other cool stories. Uh, I really like the artwork on this book. And I hope you do too. And if you'll notice, a certain somebody didn't interrupt us during the reading of that. And I think I spoke too soon. Because now I hear... I hear a knocking on my door. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be... Opened by the one, the only, Mr. Olaf. And I'm right. All right. Mr. Olaf. Here's Mr. Olaf. And he's his usual weirdo. Weird, weird, weirdo. And Mr. Olaf, you are interrupting us for another book. Your hair is still very nasty. should probably give you a comb. You know, Mr. Olaf, I'm going to be nice to you today. Yes, this is the book we read. We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins. Mr. Olaf, I'm going to give you a special massage. This is a Chinese head massage. You ever seen one of these things, guys? The Chinese head massage. Ooh, I can't even... Ugh, it's getting stuck on Olaf. Uh, 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 uh. Mm, mm, that feel good. Oh, Olaf. Mr. Olaf does not like that. I think that made your hair worse. You ever seen one of these? Works better on my head. Look. Kinda. Ooh. Ugh. It's supposed to feel good. Oh, Mr. Olaf. You better get lost. Let's see if I can fix this thing. Ugh. It's like a head scratcher type thing. Oh, interesting. But I don't know how that works so good. All right, guys. Olaf, time for you to go. Bye, Olaf. Bye. And Olaf's gone. So... I got some books for, to read to you in the upcoming days. I hope everyone has a great break.
I'm sorry I didn't have a Christmas book. Um, but it is what it is. I do got some, I got some new books and, uh, I got some cool ones. And one of them you actually might know from Storybook Online. And I'll be reading that, my version of it. It's a, it's a book. Strega, Strega Nona, if I'm saying that right. Should know, I've heard it a million times. So, I got that one. I recognize that one from Storybook Online. So that'll be fun to read. My ver my reading, my rendition of Strega Nona um, will be as fancy as the one you see at school. But hope everyone has a wonderful holiday, winter break. Come back well rested in January next year, 2022. And, uh, Come back refreshed and being the super students that you are so we could have a good start to the new year. Um, so I'll miss you guys and maybe I'll have some storybooks online read over break so we can start off the new year with a new story read by Mr. Shu. So have a great winter break, everyone. See you next year.